what you get to see in no, a few you, hours. you have to see the people. You definitely listen, brother. You got to go to Loisa, the first, uh, the first city in Puerto Rico that uh, um, where the enslaved Africans and indigenous people of the island uh, over overruled the Spaniards. And the population of Loisa is 99.5% black, and that's where our drums play the hardest. That's little Africa, you know, and, and, and the history of the tradition is so rich there, but the, 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 the uh, poverty is so high. And so when we, this hurricane hit, we made sure to ensure that our cultural institutions are not being knocked down or bought off by these Bitcoin and Google heads, you know, uh, for coming out from California using mom and dad's trust funds money. You know what I'm saying? We got we to slash that. This is our people. This is our blood. And this is our history. And um, so when you go, if you go and ever need any recommendations, man, hit me up and I'd be glad you, gladly to connect you with the people of the island. Oh, yeah. I definitely want to get there and give a real feel for what the island is all about and everything. I actually got to bring in, I want you to stay on the line because actually you mentioned the drum and I really want to bring somebody in that is very much connected to the drums, but I wanted to hear what Randall's got to say really quickly about what he, about what he heard about some of your mentoring programs and some of his reflections, and then I want to bring in Mr. Birch. Well, first of all, Maria, I love what you're doing. Bless you. Continue success. It is awesome. Thank you. I know we were talking about Puerto Rico. Oh, my pleasure. Um, I just want to chime in very briefly what you talked about on Puerto Rico. I also believe they should be independent because the benefits would be both as a statehood, um, they'd have their own industry, their own workforce. Mm-hmm. Um, they can increase local opportunities, better health care. So you know, I'm a, mm-hmm. I, I'm a component or proponent of somebody making sure that it becomes the 51st state. Uh, I think it's a good thing for Puerto Rico as a whole. Mm-hmm. You want statehood. That's I'm sorry? I'm saying that you want statehood. Is that what you're saying? No. They would enjoy the benefits of state being associated with the statehood. Uh, they need okay. to have their own industry, in my opinion, their own workforce, um, better health care. I mean, if you're going to pay into something, you know, I believe they should be independent. Yeah, I mean, independently as its own nation as what we've been, you know, we've been raised because we've been seeing the effects. My father was drafted to Nam. My grandfather drafted wow. to World War II out of Puerto Rico between the diaspora and, and it's in, and have been wounded soldiers. And so to see that our, and having the highest population of soldiers in the Korean war and to see those veterans dying, you know, I sight when you go, when we went there to do our work um, in relief, you know, we seen elderly with gangrene and, and the wrong type of insulin. And, and just, it was such a tragic experience of saying, but then you had Cuba and with me, with medics and doctors with medicine that were trying to get access to come, you know, or donate uh, doctors, where you had people from Europe trying to come through. And it's like the only thing that was blocking was the Jones Act of 1917. And so we're going, this is supposed to be the United States of America. That Jones Act, why is it being just uplifted for 10 days? We can't afford that. So it's like if we're yours, if you have this as an, as, as your your nephew or your or your brother or sister, you're, we're living in the room, but you got us living where the cockroaches are while you're eating caviar. You know, mm-hmm. there's got to be some. There's got to be some. Uh, some something happening to change us up. You gotta. You got. You've got this this brother or this little sister kidnapped in your own home, and and they deserve to be in a house that's built with water and light. So, you know, when we, I'm an artist, so I use metaphors, <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah. but, but I, I appreciate, and you know, I'm, I'm, there's this, there's so much education that needs to be taking place. Cause so many people don't know about the history of Puerto Rico as being U S history, you know, and the, the ties of over a hundred years. So I, I do my best to, to, to utilize my artwork as a platform to be able to educate um, between the pride as well as the injustices that have happened to our people, which is a connection to, to not just my movement, but everyone else's movements that are dealing with, with, uh, with injustices. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. Um, I want both of you all to stay on the line, and I really want to bring in, because like I said, he had some ties to the African-American community and definitely African drumming. Um, uh, Dean, can you bring in Angelo real quick, uh, Dr. Birch? 
Yeah, I'm about to bring him in, but I must say this before we get out the line. Randall, uh, I did meet you, brother, down at the spoken word in Burlington City, the Southern Burlington County NAACP had. Positive, brother. Oh, wow. Bruh, you, we'll talk. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. let's do that. All right. I did meet you there. So, yes, we did. So right now I'm going to bring in Dr. Birch and um, – Complete this out, Dr. Birch. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dana Mark, sir. Thank you. Good evening. How are you doing, Dr. Birch? Now, we've, we've been talking about some very interesting conversations, and I know some of these are even issues that you probably deal with on the campaign trail, and I'll actually explain that in a little bit and everything, because you're actually taking things from a non, from what would now be considered a non traditional route. And I'll explain that as well. But one thing is I did want you to talk a little bit about, we heard from Maria talking about drumming and the importance of African drumming. And you actually, in addition to the political things that I'll get to in just a minute, but you actually work with the African American Dance Ensemble and recognize the late great, and we've talked about him several times on the show, because we've had on, I've had others that were influenced by him, the late great Dr. Chuck Davis, who was definitely about understanding African music and its connection to the rest of our musical lineage, which is kind of what Maria was just talking about with some of what she's doing with hip hop. And I know that Chuck was all about making that connection of us understanding the ties between African drumming, uh, what's going on in the islands, and what's even happening in our modern music. Yes, um, and and you're you're actually going to take me out of my ram. Um, Those were things that um, I always love to hear um, Dr. Davis talk about um, Bob and Chuck did help us to understand that, you know, back in the times when drumming was for communication purposes. Um, if anyone has ever heard uh, him clap his hands, um, he could clap his hands and, and, and just about scare everyone in the in the room. But he did that in the imitation of what the drums did was to call the attention of the uh, the other tribes, the, the neighboring tribes of the people that were in those particular tribes. Um, I think we are most um, well known with the, the djembe and how it was used in certain uh, parts of Africa. And I think when you look at what, the hist- what Africans have brought to, to this country, even in the drumming, you know, if you've ever sat in church and listened to someone play an organ, um, it's a wonderful thing. And you can have someone sing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, let someone get on the drums and you have a service. And I think it, it, it just goes back to, I think drumming pretty much is in our DNA. Um, it, 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 something about drumming that causes us to stare um, is, is used for battle. Uh, back in the day before uh, they would go into battle, they would march to the beat of the drum. And we use that even today. You know, uh, he marches to the beat of his own drum. But drumming has a history, and it has something that is, I think ingrained in all of us, but for Africans, I think when we begin to understand the meaning and the power of the drum, we begin to understand uh, what it means for our culture and why we still need it. And and not just for hip hop music, you know, but um, to understand how to communicate with it. Um, and, and let me stop because you know me, I'll, I'll keep going. But I, I think even, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was going to say, I definitely agree with you that it definitely has that rich history and everything, and that's why I want you to share a little bit of that as we were hearing Maria talk about the importance of drumming to her and even some of the stuff that she's going through with the Puerto Rican uh, freedom movement and things of that nature. Now, you were actually taking things from another perspective, and it's actually almost a historical perspective because we understand that historically African Americans, if we want to go back to like the Lincoln days, were Republicans, and you were actually running – for one of the North Carolina House seats under the Republican Party. So I was wondering what got you involved in politics and why you chose to run. Were you always a registered Republican, and what got you involved in running well, this particular campaign? Because I've always known you as being an arts person and being associated with Chuck and everything. 
and, and knowing you as a minister. I know that you're a reverend, and I know that you've been involved with the ministerial alliance, but I never necessarily connected you necessarily with politics. So I was wondering what led you to get into politics and what made you decide to run for this particular seat that you're running for, which is one of the North Carolina House seats. Um, let's see. That, that's a whole lot. Let me see if I can, I can move from first to last. Number one, I, I, I became a Republican uh, when I was very young uh, because of the history of the Republican Party. Um, I don't like to get too far into uh, labels of the Republicans did this and the Democrats did that because if you look at history in and of itself, um, you, you can make an argument as to why African Americans should be Republicans, and, and then you can also look at what's going on today. But I look at it from the standpoint that, you know, even though I am a Republican, uh, matter of fact, when I first went to a meeting of the uh, Black Republicans of North Carolina, I made a statement that. I am not a Republican who happens to be black. I am a black man who happens to be a Republican. I am black first and foremost and always. And I, I think when I look at that and looking at the arts, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie called um, All About Eve, um, the, the, the narrator says about one of the characters that the only thing that should have brought her to the arts or to the stage uh, was was a row uh, in center uh, in row E center and, and that's, that was me. I never knew or thought I would be dealing in the arts. Uh, Bobby Chuck came to me one day and asked me to come help him with the African American dance ensemble. Um, my life has always been in the ministry and I think uh, being in the ministry kind of drives us to be into politics because I think the church has a has a powerful say in what goes on um, in in our community. Uh, I think the church has to stand up at some point at some time. You know, I, I'm I'm glad that we have managed to build these mega churches. I'm glad we've managed to build these great edifices. But at the same time of building these large and wonderful buildings, we have uh, people in our community who cannot pay their rent, who cannot pay their life bills, who are being evicted. And so all the money that they keep putting in our churches, I think we could be putting uh, in the in the hands of, of, of our community. I am reminded of a story once that um, – after the offering was taken up in the uh, Church of Canterbury, and I think it's the Canterbury, and um, the bishop looked at Sir Thomas and said, Sir Thomas, no longer can the uh, church say to the poor man, silver and gold, have I none? And Sir Thomas replied, no, my Lord, no longer can the church say to the impotent man, rise up and walk. We've changed one for the other. So to answer the question, I think it is incumbent, and it was incumbent upon me to run for office because I need young African-American kids, black, uh, male and female, to understand that we can do more than just sit in a pulpit. We can do more than just we can help make the laws that are going to affect us. Yes, and that's one of the things that even our other two guests have talked about is the importance of mentoring. And I know that Baba Chuck was very much about mentoring. I know that one of the people that's helping you in your campaign, Warren Herndon, has definitely been involved in rights of passage programs and has been very much involved in mentoring programs. So it seems to me that the mentoring aspect is something that crosses boundaries. It doesn't matter whether you're uh, middle class, poor, Republican, Democrat, uh, live in the hood, or live in the suburb. These are all issues that we need to find ways to reach our youth and that we're not doing a good job of it. It seems to me that a lot of times even the mentoring programs that are coming out of our church are not necessarily doing as effective a job, in my mind, in terms of mm -hmm. mentoring as they could be doing. So it seems to me that a lot of times we see these mentoring programs, but, you know, they're not doing the strong in your face kind of work that both Randall was talking about and that Maria is talking about in Minnesota. These are in different areas. One's in Minnesota, one's in the New York, New Jersey area. But a lot of times, then they're actually in the streets doing the groundwork. And I know Warren's done a lot of groundwork as well, but I know sometimes these mentoring programs only give lip service to mentoring. Exactly. 
and, and, and I think that's why it's just not about telling a child 